school, it's not an easy topic to think about or plan, but it is very important. What you're leaving behind after your death. Here to talk to us about the first steps is attorney Kanani Makaimoku, partner at Sterling and Tucker. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. It isn't easy to talk about it, but again, it is very important for your family and friends to know what's going on and what will happen. So what is the difference between a revocable living trust and a will? Well, a lot of people are familiar with the idea of a will. When they hear estate planning, they think, I need a will. Mm -hmm. But a revocable living trust is a document that you set up during your lifetime. You may transfer assets to this trust, such as your real estate, your bank accounts, and you name a successor trustee who is going to step in and manage your funds for you, distribute the assets upon your death. A will, by contrast, is also set up during your lifetime. However, it doesn't really kick into effect until your death. Okay. And at that point, a personal representative is going to step in and have to take that to probate court to prove its validity. So at what age should you set up a living trust? Well, the question of whether or not the living trust is tied to your age is an interesting one because it's really more of a consideration of what assets do you have. If you have real estate, if you've got assets in excess of $100,000, if you have young children and maybe disabled special needs family members, you should consider having a revocable trust. And then is it is it too early to ever start one, say if you're in your 30s or 40s, some people didn't even start until, you know, maybe they're looking towards retirement. Yeah, I would say it's never too early if you have the assets and you have young children and you're concerned about what will happen with them um, at the time of your death. It's never too early to plan ahead. And then when setting up an estate plan, what documents are usually prepared? So a comprehensive estate plan is more than just the revocable living trust. You should also have a last will and testament. You should have a durable power of attorney. So that document is where you're naming agents to handle legal and financial matters during your lifetime. And a comprehensive estate plan should also have your advanced health care directive. And that's where you're going to make those decisions for end of life care and have an agent designated to carry out those decisions for you. And some people think, you know, I can do this on my own. I can write out my own will, my own trust. Why would you suggest hiring an attorney is a good thing to do? A lot of people have that feeling that this is something they can download from the Internet and complete themselves. However, it may seem simple, but simple little missteps can lead to big problems. So you really should be working with an attorney in setting up your estate plan, and especially an attorney who specializes in this area of law, because there are a lot of tax considerations, laws, rules that they need to be aware of. What if you've already set up a trust or a will? When should you kind of revisit it, go back to look for any possible changes you might need to make? That's a good question. I think oftentimes people think, I set up a trust, I set up a will, I can just forget about it. Right. But it's really something you need to revisit every now and then. So we suggest that our law firm, maybe every three to five years, take a look at the documents, sit down with your, with your attorney, and take a look and make sure everything's in order because the laws change. You know, a trust that may have been suitable in 1999 is not quite as suitable in 2019. And we want to make sure it's all seamless upon your death. Unfortunately, we've heard of many cases and stories where even though a will of trust um, is laid out, it's right there in black and white in, in the fine print. Is there anything that says that it can't be changed after your death? Because a lot of times families and friends will bicker over what was left behind or what wasn't left yes. behind. What do you want to say to people who are kind of fighting right now even though something's already set? Is there anything that can be done? Well, as far as what can be done, it really depends on the document itself. But most revocable trusts do become irrevocable upon the death of the individual who established that trust. In other words, nothing can be changed. Mm -hmm. However, the trust may address issues like mediation, arbitration, some sort of method of resolving issues without necessarily having to go to court. And the hope is always that the family can get together and resolve that on their own. It's better for everyone that way. And it's good to have a discussion with family members and friends when you set these documents up to let them know what's coming up sometimes and what's being planned. Absolutely. All right. Thank it's you great so idea. Much. Kanani Makaimoku with Sterling and Tucker, thanks so much for joining Thank us. You. Very important topic. And again, we'll be discussing more about these talk topics and legal experts on hand to answer your questions for free. That's from 11 to 1 today. Tomorrow's a different topic. We will be talking about family law.